So today I'm going to show you how you make a path in your garden with these natural stones. We've used them just here as a kind of like a little border, but you could easily use these wonderful stones as your main path uh, in your garden. So all you need is, of course, these stones. And then over here, then you uh, use just regular sand as the foundation and it's easy they get really tucked in the stones there when you lay them and then later on when you have uh, laid your stones you can use for the for the grout on uh, on the top and in between the stones we use this beautiful black crushed granite but you could also just use regular sand on top uh, as you grout and then you uh, need a leveler and you need a hammer and a little shovel in case you need to take a little bit more sand out. And then of course, a spade over here, a shovel, and a little measuring tape. And the th first thing we do is actually measuring down around uh, 15, 20 centimeters down to make sure you have enough uh, space for your, for your stones. And the base down here, if you have a very wet garden, I suggest you put some gravel down first a layer of around three to five centimeters so excess water rainwater can uh, easily get away so you don't have a soaking uh, pathway and then uh, afterwards you would uh, gonna uh, add the, the sand on top and enough so you can really move the stones around really easily but let's start with digging a bit more down okay so we got it all all out all the soil here let's just mess it quickly see here perfect around 20 centimeters down and now we're ready to add our sand here let's get that in here really fill it up here there we go just smoothen out a little bit here and if you're gonna make this is just like a very thin border so here I don't need to have a like a vibrator you can Rent one online if it's going to be for your main path where you're going to have more traffic w while walking. Then it's a very good idea to have a vibrator that a machine that really, really compacts the, the sand. So compact it really with the machine so it's really, really hard. Then add another soft layer on because there's no way you can shift and move the, these stones around. If, if it's just placed on the, on the very hard sand. So you'd have enough layer here, the last few centimeters, you need to make sure that it's soft sand so you can easily shift and place them. And then they'll be also kind of more uh, solid and, and will stay in the, in the foundation you're gonna make. So make sure of that. Another thing you need to make sure of what kind of level you want on. As you can see here, if I scoot back a little bit, we have raised ours a little bit for the border here, so it gives a little height, a little drama to the flower bed. But if you have it as your main path, you need to make sure that it's level with the other ground. Like over here on this side, because we have a, a tilting flower bed, the stone is flush with the ground here. So you want to make sure if it's as a uh, pathway you need to have it of course follow the landscape but also flush to the ground and uh, also if you have the this kind of uh, flower bed because it goes down you can either make it very straight or just make a very curvy um, uh, shape to the garden like with what we have done we like the really like kind of a soft form just really flowing just following very natural to the instead of doing it very straight but that's another option you can do but ours just have a little curve almost like a little river to it so I'm gonna uh, add a little bit more sand here and then we'll get started on how to lay the, the stones so I finished my sand here and now I'm gonna go to the really fun part, laying the, these stones. And a little tip on the, the, the measure of this border, I use around 35 centimeters that I follow. I have this measuring tape all the way around, so I kind of get the same 
uh, width of the border, you could also use a piece of um, timber or something that you have cut to a certain length, but use it all along around the border so you get the same width of the border. That's going to look really catchy to the eye and look more uh, yeah, pretty in the garden that it has the same width. So that's a really good tip following that all the way around when you lay the stones in the beginning when you make the whole edge. But now, the thing is with these stones, my rule is that you use all the stones. You don't go in and, ah, which one should I use? So you kind of always use the stone you have in your hand. You must kind of find a place to it. Otherwise, it's going to take days and days when you sort out what kind of stone. So play around with the, with the size, of course, and also where could it lay. And you, the, the really good idea is if you make sure it comes really close to the next stone. You want to have it touching around three sides. So if you uh, imagine it's going to, you can almost hear it, it touches there. Then you want to have it touching the next stone and another stone. This is both for really good support, but also that you avoid having too much uh, of an open gap here where the grout is. Because later on you're going to have more space here, means more weeds. And you can, you can use like the end of the, of the hammer. If you can get your hammer down here, or a piece of stick, that means it's too big of a gap. So you maybe have to shift the stone a little bit around, so it's a smaller gap there. Another thing is, when you do these stones, you want to make sure that if you have, I'll show you here, if you have the stones here, if you see maybe from the top here, you do not want to have a flush line. So it's kind of going like this. Because then again, you don't have the, the stones attaching. And for the eye side, it's not going to look pretty that it has the river flowing the same, almost in a straight line. You want to have it as natural looking as possible. So you want to make sure if this don't go here, this one it's, it has to, to break that line there and then kind of the next grout or the next little river would fl flow the other way. And then again, the next one, you're going to break that pattern so it goes out this way instead of having a very, very open line like this. That's a no-go when you're laying these stones. So let's get started on the stones. I just used the first one. If there's, an, if there's too much, you can either use your little shovel or your hand, move it in a little bit away, and then you place it. And notice here, as I said earlier, it's a little bit higher, but if it's on your walk where you want to make sure it's very flush to the path, and all the stones here do not have it higher than this. You're going to either stumble over it and also it's not going to look nice if it's higher. So make sure then if there's too much there, place it down and then again use your hammer. hammer make it floss there. You, then you can use your leveler and make sure then it's either maybe it's a little too, then you add a little bit more and make sure it has a nice running grout there. And then you can make sure either if it's, if it's level. If you have a garden going downhill, you want to make have a slightly little tilt to it around. Every running meter you would have like a decline in one centimeter because then you have rainwater running down. You don't want to have um, water laying on your stone. So make sure if you have a path Make sure where, the, where your water goes, you have a little tilt again, every meter uh, decline on one centimeter, so your rainwater would run away. So that's the way you can make it if you want to have it with a little uh, decline. You, you, after a little piece you make, you add this on uh, afterwards to keep an eye on that. So this one we just put down a little bit. So here when it comes to the next one, another thing you also want to make sure about, here we really want to have kind of a, this sharp end out here. So the end stones here as a like invisible line, you could also put like a real string on just to help you guide which way. But because we have this, we don't have a, a flower bed on this side, we have so we kind of use this um, 
terrace as our guideline. Otherwise, put a string up if you have a flower bed on both sides. That will help you later on to follow that straight line if you want a straight line on, on one of the sides. Um, so now I'm just going to place the other one, play a little bit around again where it should be. Use your hammer again. There you go. And then later on you're going to fill in the grout. So don't worry about that now because it's better waiting with the grout because once you put sand on you can see how close and if you get the stones touching by these three, minimum three sides. So here we're just going to play with the other one. Again, I'll try to use the one here. If it doesn't fit here, I'll play around with a different one. And it's really great using, we use bigger surfaces and then smaller one. It really gives a nice flow to this uh, path here, I think. So here again, it's gonna, it's touching and it's gonna divide the grout here. It's a little bit too tall here. So I'll just move it down a little bit. You can push it because the sand down on the top is really soft. And there we go. You can choose on just having these flat surfaces, but then you have a little issue here because I don't have a lot of space. So I kind of do look, okay, what way can it go? Then I, I will use the small one, still touching two sides and this side here, really to make it compact so it's not going to move in six months when you walk on it. It's really going to be settled really nicely. And then you can use the hammer here again to get it on the on the level you want. You can again use your leveler if you if you want or use your hand to imagine also thinking okay I'm gonna walk on these how bumpy is it gonna be so and then again you can use your hammer okay there's no hole there neither here I can't get it in so that's perfect then I'll try and use this big one here and notice here I'm trying using I'm not using stones that's you would never put this this one uh, on the top, imagine walking on this or your kids running. That's like almost like foot injury there. So make sure using a, a nice soft surface here. That's going to be lovely. Imagine walking on these with bare feet in the summer. Our son loves walking on those. He uses it as a path even though it's a border. So here now I have a big one I'm going to play around with. Actually maybe using here. And it, it, it does take, it's not a path like this. It's not finished in five minutes. It's gonna take time. What you can do, what we also did here, we took like a section like this at a time, had a coffee, maybe did something else in the garden and then went back to it, have a look, okay, maybe I need to move something. But don't, um, don't uh, think that, okay, this is a project I need to finish uh, in a day because then you, you end up running really annoyed with it or like just getting tired of it. So take it, it's really a fun project and of course this is the most fun part, laying the stones. It is almost like just a big puzzle. Okay, so we're almost done in this section here. I'm just going to make it, really make sure it's going to fit. I have to add a little small one there, but this one is looking fine. Okay, so here I have a little issue because Normally you wouldn't start in the middle like I did. I just did it to show you how it was done. I should have done in hindsight from the end of course because now it's a little bit of a puzzle to get it to match. But I think I figured it out. It is really like I said a, like a little puzzle piece here. You twist and turn it so actually I just use this end there and then I'm going to match it with this little stone here. So I'll get some extra out here and then I think we're almost done. Okay, so I have my crushed granite. Look at that shiny black here. So what I do, I'm just gonna fill up all the grout here since I'm finished. Really, you can push it in here like that. And you, you need to add more later on after it's really settled. What I also do, I take the water hose and really get it in there so it really gets more compact. And it's not totally 100% covers the, the weeds because the perennials, the flowers will self sow through here or some birds will throw some seeds. So you can't avoid that. But what we did instead of in the in summer last year, I was out here on my knees taking all the weeds away. And then Alan came up with this great idea that we could buy a weed burner on wheels. That was the best idea he had for a long time. But that really 
only, of course, not close to the house, meters away from the house. But uh, we will just run over the, the border here within five minutes, and then all the weeds that would come up, it will uh, get burned and then wither away. No need for me to go and pick out. There will come some more sometimes, but all the weeds would just uh, natural uh, get away, and then I'll have a really cl clean look, and I don't have to spend like over a day on taking weeds away on my knees. So here, I'm just gonna fill it up, and I'll show you the final result after I put a little bit of water on top. So I just added some uh, water on the uh, path here. It is to uh, make the, 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 the grout here, the, gra uh, the granite, more compact by time and it will floss more down. You can also wait for, for a good rainfall to do the job. And then you can see if it needs a little bit more. But otherwise it will get compact. See, there's some holes here now, so I need to add a little bit more of, uh, granite here. But otherwise it will get really beautiful compact here. You can easily take a, a brush or something over it and then your path is done. Oh, and um, another thing is there's no need to use uh, weed carpet under these because the weed carpet, first of all, it can make the, the stones um, shift around. So it's much better just have them in this sand. It'll get way more compact. And because another thing is if you have uh, on top, you can't avoid getting weeds or seeds from your perennial that being self-sowed uh, in the path, that will come all automatically because it's from above. So there's no need to put a weed carpet uh, underneath uh, all your stone path here and the sand. Okay, so now I used a tiny broom. Of course, you can use a much bigger one. But as you can see, it really settled in really nicely. And look at this gorgeous new uh, pathway here. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you're gonna Keep be cracking along this summer or spring in your own garden with these natural stones. So thank you for watching. Tak for your day.